So I'm pretty much done using Cursor for AI agent development. It's really caused me nothing but anguish and has wasted so many development hours, so many precious development hours that I could be doing so much more productive things with my time besides prompting, getting the error, taking the error, pasting in the chat, prompting again, and then rinse and repeat over and over and over to the application works sort of good and then ship that to production. I mean, this is how most companies are building applications nowadays. The standards for things have really just gone downhill. You're going to be paying $90 for a Switch video game soon enough. And guess what? When it releases on its release date, most likely it's not going to be fully completed even. There will be bugs. Oh, don't worry about those bugs. Those will be fixed in version patch 3.4.7. That's when it will be fixed. When's the timeline for that? Uh, could take years. But once you get there, the game will be done. Give us $90 now. <laughs> it's really all software is getting to this point where we're looking for things that are sort of good, sort of run right, not things that are per perfection. And I believe right now with the advent of AI coming into the market with how much of a big player and big game changer it is to all type of applications development, it is more important than ever to deliver perfect software. Things that are actually engineering marvels. They will be appreciated more and more now than ever due to really all this slop, all this mishandling, all this, it works sort of good applications that we are seeing. So why am I rambling about this? Well, a few reasons here. One would probably be because with some of our clients we've spoken with, they've come to us and asked us, oh, can we use this type of end-to-end -end AI development to streamline the billing of a lot of different applications that we're building? As if we're not already using something similar to here. We use AI with almost everything we do, but we use it responsibly. We use it with a very narrow set of changes. Make sure the context is explicit. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I've had so many issues when the context wasn't as, as stated in clean, plain English as possible to LLMs before. One of the worst memory leaks I've had within my software engineering career in production came from an engineer prompting the AI to configure something on the front end where in, in reality it was server-side rendered and was needed to be configured for its back-end counterpart. This delivered a crippling memory leak to our production application that had thousands of users. And yeah, I just had to heat dump it, do all these different things, and spend days trying to figure out what caused it. And obviously, who are you going to track down? The engineer that wrote this code? The engineer has no idea. The LM wrote the code. So it can cause a lot of different things. So on top of having the correct context, using change states and things like this to quickly revert back, because trust me, I've seen things as crazy as I'll be working within a Go server, and then we'll have code pushed up to production, and then all of a sudden, I'll see a node application within the Go, ser Go server that we're building. I ask them, why are we building a node server within our code server? And they don't realize it's happening because that's how many changes can happen. It could essentially insert a whole different application. You're building a .NET Core application. Would you like a, uh, would you like a Python application inside it? I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, it's really, it's cutting edge it's unbelievable how quick effective and easy it is to generate so many lines of code but most engineers again they're lazy they're not going to take the time to understand what's really going into the prs it is leading to really seeing whole other applications pushed into an application that has no context none whatsoever it's not even written in the same language so it's unbelievable to me so back to companies wanting to use AI development more. So for a smaller task, we are able to use it. And we did use it on an image generation type microservice widget that we built where essentially we get an image, remove the background, give it in a bunch of different resolutions, and then generate it and impose it on portraits and business cards to be shown and downloaded. So with that, with it only being front end base with a very narrow scope here, we're able to deliver a pretty good application that works well. Obviously, the UI is not as good as it should be. There's a lot of different things we could have done there. But I would say it saved about 50% of the development time. Does it completely eliminate the need for engineering and actually going in and manually coding? No. 
we found that you still need to do it in a lot of different places. There is hallucinations that could happen when working with the AI. And these could happen where you're starting to get just straight gibberish back. And most developers not understanding how things work will take that as documentation, take that as the rule of law. This is what to follow, even though it's leading them down a path to nowhere. Another example of this is I was recently trying to set up OAuth 2 between a React Native app and my Go server. Granted, I've never worked on Go, and I will praise LLMs for making it so easy to pick up the syntax of almost any language. It really is truly remarkable. I picked up an ASP.NET 4.8, which I haven't touched in 10 years, a few months ago to work on a application for another client we had. And it was almost as easy as if I haven't stopped working with that in probably five, six years ago was the last time I touched on that. So that's really incredible. But you really need to understand that it's going to lead to issues most of the time. And if you don't understand what's going on, they will happen. Even if you're getting the correct output, and all I hear is, you get the correct output, it doesn't matter. I'm just looking for the correct output. I hear it over and over and over again. I mean, I see engineers who take interviews with me. Again, they lie on their resumes, maybe, or they're a contact of someone. And I'll ask them basic stuff, and they don't understand it. All they know is I could get the output from LLM, but they don't understand anything that leads to this output and it's kind of infuriating so even though we're saving 50 percent on development time we're still having to spend hours and then when we present stuff like this to clients they get a little worrisome they wonder why we're spending so much time why we're doing all these things to not just deliver the sort of okay app that we would have delivered if we just straight vibe coded the application again it's not even that it's just not working it's just so many different things the bundle size is even bigger does it even matter now that applications are taking longer to load than they used to? Because we're not using these many different optimizations that we used to handpick and put into bundlers. Most clients would say no. They're more concerned about money. They're more concerned about meeting timelines. So that was interesting there. I just wanted to rant on that very, very quickly there. It's... um. It's something I'm starting to notice more and more is where you're seeing all this hype all, and then you're seeing people who founded these companies go and use AI and what they do with AI is they build proof of concept applications, things like that, post it on X and all everyone's doing is bragging about how cool it is, how easy it was and things like that. And they expect a dev team at protocoding to do the same. Again, as if we're already not doing the most cutting edge stuff when it comes to AI development. But it's hard to save hours when you want to deliver something perfect. And that's what we really pride ourselves on. We really pride ourselves on delivering great applications. This is, a, this is, excuse me, this has helped us stand out so well as a company. This has helped us go from a company of two people to now a company of 10 plus people. And it's really because through great software that we're releasing, we're able to get more clients. Anyone that's trying to go solo, anyone trying to start their own company and things like that, that are done working at, you know, the W-2 um, employment type for any company, just know that delivering great software, delivering a great final product will always get eyeballs on it. That will always happen. This whole thing of clients coming to you, trying to slash hours, trying to do all these different things, you got to realize that you're just making your application, again, sort of good, sort of works, does what we need. And maybe this is where our expectations are going. Maybe expectations are going just so low that really we don't care what the outcome is. We just care that it works good enough for us to use. It's really shocking to us. So moving forward, how will we efficiently use AI development? Well, with all those things I said about the scoping, the narrow changes, and the context, really, we just mostly use it for references. For example, we're working with Go which is a great language. I've really enjoyed using it to build out my server so far. It's very easy to use it to get many different things. I would honestly start to move towards typing being the first to go. How about software engineers stay and typing goes? No one wants to type. I feel we could get to a point where maybe it's speech to text that is so good it replaces actual just typing to code. And it's again, it's not vibe coding where it's you say one word, build me an app that predicts the weather five days out, and then boom, 
cursor builds 300 files and it runs and everything's broken. <laughs> it's, I could see it working as typings being eliminated because I could see how efficiently it is to write code. The average developer has a error in their line of code probably every five lines or so, I think the stat is. So yes, AI can definitely help that in a way that works even more than auto completion. So I could see typing dying sooner. But really, I'll leave this video with the following. You will always have clients, if you decide to go in the software industry, want more for less. They want as much as they can get for less, and that's what everyone really wants. But when it comes to quality, does it matter as much? Does a high-performing, well-optimized application matters as much as something that just gets the job done for most clients? I'll leave that up to you guys to decide in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.